All right, so full disclosure, originally this video was supposed to be about arcade emulation on the Steam Deck. However, after I got started working on that video, I forgot how difficult it was to really get arcade ROMs to work properly. So I've decided to scrap that idea for now. And in turn, what I realized was a while back, I did mention that I was going to try to investigate Decky Loader and see what that experience was like. So that is what today's video is all about, is how to install Decky Loader, some of the plugins that you can use for it, and what my experience has been like using it so far. So with all that being said, let's just go ahead and jump right in and start with the installation of Decky Loader. Alrighty, so first up, you're going to want to be in desktop mode, so if you're already in game mode, go ahead and drop out of that and switch over to your desktop. And once you're in desktop mode, go ahead and fire up your browser of choice. I'm using Firefox here, and then hit the link in the description below this video so you can go ahead and get over to the Decky Loader GitHub page. Once you're here, if you scroll down a little bit, you'll find that there's a download link. Click that, and that's going to go ahead and download the Decky Loader install file. However, like they mentioned in the installation steps, you'll have to go ahead and remove that dot download from the end of it, so it just ends in desktop as you can see here. After you rename the file, go ahead and move this to your desktop. Now you can go ahead and launch the file and click continue on the dialog that pops up. If you haven't set an admin password, it will prompt you asking if it's okay if it temporarily sets one itself. That's completely fine, so just go ahead and click yes here. And then finally, you'll be prompted whether to install the release or pre-release. Personally, I always choose the release option, so go ahead and select that and then click OK. And once the installation is completed, now it's okay to go ahead and click OK to close out. And now with Decky Loader fully installed, it's okay to go ahead and hop back over to game mode. Alright, so now that we have Decky Loader installed, let's take a look at some of the neat things that we can actually do with it. For starters, to access Decky Loader, you want to go ahead and bring up your quick settings over on the right. And then if you go to the bottom, you'll find that you've got a new icon here where you can manage Decky Loader and all of its plugins. The icon at the top will let you go ahead and go to the Decky Loader store, where you can get a look at all the different plugins available to you. Once you're in here, just like the native Steam interface, you have the ability to sort by alphabetical or most downloads, so it's pretty easy at a glance to see what's available to you. And the first thing that I opted to install here, as you can see, is Steam Grid DB, which is incredibly helpful if you like to make sure that all the art across all of your games and applications is uniform, looks really nice, and it prevents you from having to customize all of this in the desktop interface. After you've added this plugin to your Steam Deck, you can go ahead and bring up the quick menu on the right again, go down to your plugins, and then sort of get an overview of what this plugin provides. And in a nutshell, what it will allow you to do now is to go ahead and find any game or application in your library, then you can go ahead and hit start to bring up the context sensitive menu for it, and you'll find the new change artwork button, which when pressed, now will allow you to go ahead and search and find artwork in a very quick, easy way, without having to set all this up through the Steam desktop client whenever you're in desktop mode. And after you've made a selection for the art that you find most appealing, like this Angerfoot cast that I've chosen here, then you can go ahead and drill into the title and see where all that artwork is reflected. And one of the things I really liked about this, aside from the capsules that they have that really just has all of the artwork provided for you automatically, is that within this interface you still have the option to customize individual elements as well. So if you just want to change the icon, or the hero, or the vertical artwork, you can set each of those individually if you wish. So if you're like me and you just really like the idea of fine-tuning how everything is displayed in your Steam Deck's interface, this is a really straightforward, easy-to-use plugin that will allow you to pretty things up without, again, having to jump over to the desktop mode and spend a lot of time over there hopping back and forth. And stepping away from aesthetics for a second, let's go ahead and take a look at another plugin that I found to be really useful, and that would be ProtonDB. And just like installing Steam Grid DB, you can access this in the same way by going over to that quick menu and jumping back over to the marketplace for Decky Loader. And once you've installed ProtonDB badges, you'll find that you have some options here to customize how they actually appear in the interface if you want. Although personally, I just left all of the defaults in place. And then when you browse your library and actually drill into one of your games, You'll find these new badges in the upper left hand corner of the header image that gives you an idea of how well the game plays on the Steam Deck. And at first, I honestly thought this was just going to be some visual indicator of how well a game performs on the deck, but that's actually a button you can hit to bring up the ProtonDB site, which will give you a breakdown of any specific tinkering or changes that users had to make to get a good experience with that particular game. I mean, assuming of course that the community was able to get this game running, but I really can't overstate how useful it is to go ahead and access this information directly on device without having to pull it up on a separate computer or your phone 
phone or something like that. Just being able to tell at a glance whether or not a game will play on the Steam Deck, outside of whether or not it's considered to be supported or technically playable according to Steam, is definitely helpful in its own right, but then even more so considering you can quickly and easily review whatever steps someone might have taken to get a particular game to run. Case in point, while I was in the middle of making this video, I actually discovered that Silent Hill Homecoming can be run on the Steam Deck, where previously I had a lot of issues getting that game to run, and I was pretty delighted to see that I could hop in and just check it out. Moving on, the next plugin that I decided to check out was one called CSS Loader, which will allow you to change the appearance of your Steam Deck's menu interface. Now, I kind of mentioned wanting to do this in a video a while back where I talked about the native ways you could customize the Steam Deck, but this definitely allows you to make some wilder changes to customize the Steam Deck more to your liking. I spent some time hopping around the different theme options available, but ultimately ended up settling on this Persona 5 Phantom Thieves skin, which I thought looked really, really nice. Of course, if you don't want something that's quite so bombastic, you can also make subtler changes like just giving your games rounded corners if you'd like, but just like the other plugins that we've already covered, this one's also really easy to interact with and understand. And finally, the last plugin that I messed around with is also centered around customization, and that would be Animation Changer, which, as the name suggests, allows you to change the animations on your Steam Deck for things like when it goes to sleep or when you first boot your system up. And I have to say, there are a shocking amount of options available to you, and most of them are really, really great as well. And one of the first ones that I checked out was this amazing classic Resident Evil intro for your Steam Deck. Like, that just looks amazing. But honestly, there's a ton of these and really just about a different boot up sequence for almost anything you could think of, whether it's like Stranger Things or Beavis and Butthead or Metal Gear Solid or Snake. any number of other pop culture references. <laughs> And charmingly, there's also an assortment of videos that replicate the boot-up sequences of classic consoles, which I thought was excellent if you're somebody who, you know, predominantly uses your Steam Deck for emulation, I guess. And again, just like every other plugin we've checked out through Decky Loader so far, it's all very easy to understand, navigate, and ultimately get applied to your system. So whether you're just looking to customize your Steam Deck a little bit, clean up your library of games and how it's presented to you in the interface, or just figure out whether that game that says it's unsupported is really unsupported or if it just takes a little bit of tinkering, Decky Loader is definitely worth checking out, and of all the tinkering and modifications I've seen to the Steam Deck so far, it's definitely one of the easiest to perform. Alright, and that's it for this one. Again, not the video that I thought I was going to end up making this week, but this is where we have ended up. So that was Decky Loader in a nutshell, and ultimately it is a very cool way to sort of extend the functionality of your Steam Deck without a ton of effort. But if you have any questions, or if you have any comments, or any plugins that you personally would recommend if you're somebody who already uses a Decky Loader, please do let me know in the comments below. As far as what's coming up on the channel, I will be doing August pickups in about a week or so at this point. Uh, and then also, I will be trying to do a tutorial video, I think, about how to put the original Resident Evil games on your your Steam Deck, but not through emulation, through the native PC versions, which recently became available on good old games, or at least 1 and 2 are, 3 may still be on the way, but yeah, that's kind of what's coming down the pike. So, as always, thank you so much for your time and hanging out here on the channel. I really, really appreciate it. Take care, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.